Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 3, Part 5 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6th of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So in our final section mm -hmm. of this session, we're going to talk about developing a sincere desire to repent and forgive. Mm. So from our prior conversations, we can see that intention is crucial if we're actually going to engage forgiveness and repentance. Yes. Um, so this developing a sincere desire um, and intention to forgive and repent is going to be essential. Yes. And we know that God's laws measure intention and desire. Yes. And we know that forgiveness can only happen with sincere desire. Repentance can only happen with sincere desire. So the word desire keeps popping up <laughs> yes. all the time here. Yes. <laughs> so how are we going to get sincere about this desire? Because anyone who's attempted to uh, forgive or repent um, because they feel they have to or because we've said it's a good idea or because, uh, well, we'll talk about in various ways that we can be insincere in this so-called desire. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll know that it doesn't work. So so we thought it was good, didn't we, just to actually talk about how we're going to get sincere about this whole process. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So developing a sincere desire to forgive. Now, for our listeners, uh, we've actually spoken, we started to speak about this in our session yesterday. We did. And the specifics is a specific sections of mm. that session yeah. <laughs> where we talked about it yeah. are entitled what it feels like as god's laws operate to motivate forgiveness yes so you'll see i will have said that specific heading yeah. <laughs> in yesterday's presentation that's right and also in the future there'll be a clip entitled exactly that yes so that will correspond with this part of our discussion and the second area area we talked about it was when we spoke about speeding up the process of forgiveness. Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm. All right. So, but beyond that. So this is an information in addition to, that. to those particular principles we discussed. Yes. In those sections that you've mentioned. Yeah. Mm. So it all works together. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But beyond the, those things we already mentioned, mm -hmm. what can help motivate me to develop an intention or a sincere desire to forgive. Yeah. Well, anybody who's listened to any of my presentations for any length of time would know that I've focused their attention on three primary things. Right? Mm. The first primary thing is humility. Yeah. Right? The second primary thing is truth. Yeah. Right? And the third primary thing is faith. Yeah. Now, of course, we also had to talk about desire. Yeah. And desire, we mentioned in our last assistance group, is very, very much faith. Yeah. Faith about something being possible in the future causes us to develop a desire. So faith and desire are very much related to each other. Mm. So, so, so what we need to do is we go, okay, in order to you know, open my heart to the concept of forgiveness, I'm first going to have to learn to be truly humble. And mm. that means, and, and our definition of humility has always been being open to and desirous of feeling every single emotion, whether it's painful or pleasurable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if I'm truly humble, that's going to have a very, very good effect on my, my processes of forgiveness, obviously, because mm. mm. I'll, I'll be able to get to the point where I, I can recognize sin easily. Yep. I can easily see that I have hurt inside of me, that I can easily feel I'm sensitive to it. I easily cry. Mm -hmm. I easily feel my other emotions, such as fear, anger, shame, whatever it is. Yep. Just like a child would easily feel those particular emotions. That's what yep. being humble is all about. And also recognize that I'm being illogical when I am being illogical and recognize that I am 
doing something wrong when other people are getting harmed and it's pretty obvious that they're getting harmed and, mm -hmm. and being humble even to the operation of conscience which we raise in a few weeks time yeah that that is all a part of our condition of humility yeah so that's really important yeah the second thing which we mentioned obviously is this aspect of truth, truth. now now, if I am resistive to the concept of absolute truth, mm -hmm. that God has absolute truth, and that, that, and that that absolute truth is available to me, mm -hmm. then I will be very, very resistive to, the, to any form of forgiveness or repentance for any act I've ever taken. I will even be resistant to the concept that there is such a thing as sin. Yeah. So I'm, if I'm resistive to the absolute truth, I'm resistive to... The concept of sin and i'm resistive to uh, the laws the that govern it the laws that govern it and mm -hmm. therefore i'm not going to be able i'm not sincere i'm not going to be able to be sincere even no not, it's not even going to, to be forgive. possible yeah i'm not even going to engage the processes of forgiveness and repentance yeah. because i don't even believe it's true yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't even think it's true i don't even think the poss it's possible to be true even. Yes. Yeah. and i don't even believe that god does have laws and that god does uh, that there is such a thing as sin and so yeah. forth yeah. of course if i don't believe any of those things then i will never engage the process of forgiving somebody for their sin or being repentant for my own yeah so truth is going to have a large effect on my life there mm -hmm. faith is a is a third one we mentioned which is also mixed with desire yeah right faith generates desire mm -hmm. so before you can have a desire to repent you or must or have forgive, or forgive. forgive yeah in this case we're talking about forgiveness but yeah. before you have a desire to forgive you must have faith that forgiveness works Mm. You must have faith that forgiving will benefit mm -hmm. you and others. Mm -hmm. You must have faith that it's going to help your life. Mm -hmm. You must have faith that it's actually something God likes you to do, wants you to do. Mm -hmm. You've got to have faith in a number of different areas before you'll do it. Mm -hmm. If you do have faith, that will generate the desire. Yes. But if you don't, you're not going to have a desire. No. Right? So the question is, how can we generate a developer's sincere desire to forgive? Yep. We have to go back to the basics. Yes. Humility, truth, faith, and a desire to love. Yeah. So, and if we find that, as you've said, we are resistive to the concept of absolute truth, we, we're struggling with humility, we don't have any faith, then we need to work on all the things that are opposing us in those three, three or four areas. Yeah, look, look at yeah. our resistance yep. and release any emotion that yep. causes this resistance. And in our first assistance group in 2016, you spent the entire group basically assisting people to see how you can work on those areas, didn't you? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And in the second assistance group, we focused on all of the hardships of that, you know, yes. what it feels like, you know, with yep. the addictions the and, the emotions and the personal processes that and I'll all need that. to engage. Yeah. And that should also help us yes. because that is all truth too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So working on all those areas, they're all the things that we can do to help t us to develop uh, an intention or a sincere desire to forgive. Yep. Yes. Okay, yep. fantastic. Yeah. And uh, and remember that all of our refusal to forgive and all of our intentions to not forgive all do resolve revolve essentially yep. around those four things. Around our resistances to those things, that's going to create a refusal to forgive. If we work on those things, we're going to automatically start to grow in yep. our desire, in our faith about forgiveness which is going to lead us down that track yes yeah. if yeah. we want love in our lives if we want to be humble if we want truth in our lives if we have faith mm -hmm. that the, there are going to be rewards and benefits for engaging those particular processes then our resistance will melt away yeah it it's will. great hey yeah. yeah so so again all we really need to do is concentrate on those four basic things mm -hmm. And, and while it's important, while we, you know, we're having these conversations to give people more information, yep. 
at the end of the day, the real information they should have been applying at this uh, up to this point is just those four things. Because if they did, they would already be in a state of repentance or forgiveness. Yeah. Depending on what's happened. Yeah. Uh, already, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They'd already know what the processes are mm. if they had engaged those four things truthfully and honestly, sincerely, with longing. Yes. Right. And and. Um I can certainly see for myself that focusing on those four areas now makes me, as I'm preparing this material and discussing this material with you, very soft to these concepts as opposed to how I was uh, five years ago, three years ago, when I was in total opposition to those four principles mm. and those four aspects of my relationship with myself and with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely I can attest to that. Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we needed to go back to those basics. Yes. Remember the basics. Yeah. Those basic principles, if you apply them sincerely with longing, they will get you through all of these processes. Yeah. Yeah. So you. it's interesting, isn't it? It's sort of like you can focus on the primary things and that as long as you get the base of God's way, you, it's almost like you don't need further instruction because not really following the way is educational and gives you the instruction as you go. Yes, and obviously, you know, we're giving this extra education mm -hmm. in order to alleviate most of the resistances. Yes, it helps with all of that, doesn't it? It does, yeah. and it yeah. also develops some faith. Having more knowledge develops a bit more faith and yep. so forth and more truth. We see the importance of things better. So it's not, it's not of no benefit, mm -hmm. but if we had been truly and sincerely focusing on developing those four things, we probably wouldn't need it now. Mm. So if we find after seven, eight years of listening for many people that, that they still haven't really engaged these processes of forgiveness or repentance or even understand them, mm -hmm. and a lot of the information we've already discussed, let alone what we're going to discuss, is new to them, mm -hmm. then I suggest it's because they haven't engaged the four basic things yeah. sincerely. Yeah. Because if they had of, they would have been educated directly by God about all these other matters. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And our intention to forgive, we're going to talk also about, more about that when we get to the letters, also from the listeners, mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. talk about what it motivates either uh, an intention to resist forgiveness and... Exactly. And so we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's now talk about developing a sincere desire to repent. Mm -hmm. So again, for our listeners, for our viewers, you're going to find additional information mm -hmm. about how to develop a sincere desire to repent in the sections in our second session that were entitled, What It Feels Like As God's Laws Operate Upon Me to Motivate Repentance. And the other section, which was called Speeding Up the Process of Repentance. Mm. So what we're about to speak about now is in addition to what we spoke about yesterday on those two areas. And all of the information goes together to hopefully assist you to develop this sincere desire to repent. Okay, Jesus. Yes, again, I'd like to basically say the same thing as what I said in the forgiveness section the very four basic things that we've been looking at will be the things that cause us to develop a desire to repent in the long run. And remember, those four basic things again were the desire to love and mm -hmm. not hurt people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number one, like, yeah. so, so if, I, if I see that I'm hurting a person and I really have an, a, a sincere desire to not hurt people, mm. I, I would straight away be willing to repent for the things that yeah. I've done that hurt people. So we have to look at our intention here, don't we? Because often our intention is actually to hurt other people because we think that's going to make us feel better. Yeah, we want to punish them or resentful or hateful or whatever other reason. Yep. That's not love and we need to see it as not love. And it opposes yeah. our desire to repent. It opposes. Of course, of course. Our, it's not love. It always yeah. is going to. Yeah. You know, anything that's not love is going to oppose any desire to do anything good, yeah. including the desire to repent or, or forgive for that matter. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to, do, are we developing this desire to love? Mm. Are we doing it? Mm. Or are we just like insincere about it? 
like, you know, oh, yeah, I'll call myself a sincere desire love, but really all I want <laughs> is my selfish addictions met. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, we need to be honest about that. Yeah. Now, humility, again, will help me look at that. Mm -hmm. See, see if, I, if I can go, okay, I have hurt other people, that helps me be more humble to the fact that I am doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. It also, if I'm humble to the fact, well, why did I hurt these other people? What motivations did I have? Mm -hmm. That's a part of humility, mm -hmm. examining myself, being self-aware, looking at things how God sees them, listening to what God's trying to tell me about what is right and what is wrong. That's all a part of my humility, mm -hmm. just as it was with forgiveness, so it is too with repentance. Mm -hmm. Looking at truth. What is the truth? Were they hurt? Did I hurt them? Mm. What's God's feeling about what the truth is? Mm. And what, what is human feelings about what the truth is? How different is that? Yeah. These will all help me look mm. through and examine mm -hmm. my desire to repent and yeah. what I need to repent for. Yeah, to assess what I need to repent for. Yeah. yeah, like be honest with myself. Stop lying to myself. Lying to yourself is one of the worst possible things you can do. Man, there's people who are heavily like in terrible pain and suffering in the spirit world, in the hells, who have lied to themselves their entire existence on earth. And that's the result yeah. of just being in this hellish condition, sometimes for centuries yeah. and sometimes longer, yeah. right? Because they lied to themselves. Tell yourself the truth, <laughs> you know, live in harmony with the truth. Be truthful with others. Stop living in a facade. The facade is just lying to others. You're going to hurt others when you lie to others. If they're going to think you're someone you're not, yeah. you're better off being someone you are. Yeah. That's all about truth too. That's all about how, how just by presenting a false appearance of yourself, you're actually causing damage to others. Mm. Stop doing it. <laughs> you know, that's, we need to come to see those particular things. And then, of course, the aspect of our faith in all yeah. that. Yeah. Our like, faith that it's actually going to work out well for us if we do acknowledge yeah. our sin. If we're truthful, it's going to yeah. be great. Yeah. If, we're, if we're humble, it's going to be great. Yeah. If we do want to love, it's going to be great. It's not going to all turn out terrible. Like, you know, it's not going to be doom and gloom. It's yeah. going to be great. Just because you have doom and gloom in your life now, it's because of the sin. Yeah. The pain and suffering is not because you did anything right. <laughs> it's because you're doing the things wrong yeah. yeah and and we need to be honest and truthful about that now now again we can see the four basic principles yeah that wanting to love desire for truth desire for humility desire for faith mm -hmm. developing faith which generates desire yeah these are going to help us through the process of repentance yeah. what about this aspect of wanting a relationship with others and with god well, that's a part of love, I think. Yeah. Every, like, wanting love is part of wanting to be loved and wanting lo to love others. Yeah. Wanting to be loved from God and wanting to love God. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a part of the love aspect of it all, yeah. wanting to live in harmony with love. Yeah. Like, love brings beautiful results. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's such a happy place when you're truly in love and you're feeling love from somebody else. Why wouldn't you want it? Yeah. So, so stop, stop. Do, doing and engaging the sinful things that cause love to disintegrate. Yeah. That cause love to be damaged. Yeah. Stop doing it. Yeah. You know, look at yourself honestly here. So these four basic things again are going to mm. help us greatly to take action mm -hmm. and uh, and work through the processes mm. of repentance. Mm. Mm. And we've talked a lot already in the series, haven't we, about what creates a refusal to repent and, and the, all of those things. I don't think we need to cover Yeah, that we again. know that, the, you know, as we've mentioned, it's anger and resentments and desires false and beliefs. false beliefs and all these different things. We know all that. We, yep. know, we know all that. Like, when are you going to, the question is, when are you going to give it all up? Yeah. That's really the question. Mm -hmm isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't matter how many false beliefs you have and how many desires you have that are sinful and all those other things. Really, in the long run, what matters is, are you going to make a decision today mm -hmm. to, to stop living in them and to stop justifying them and, to, and instead to live in harmony with those four basic principles or not? What, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's really what matters. Yeah. So, so I think you know, we can get bogged down in detail and it's not and it's not bad to mention the detail as we yes. have. Yeah. But it, we must see again 
that the four basics will get us through a lot if we're sincere. Yes. If we have a sincere longing to engage them, yeah. we will already be going through these processes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Personal motivations driving my desire to forgive. Mm. So since God's laws measure sincerity, it's pretty plain that God's laws are going to measure my personal motivations for engaging in forgiveness. And obviously we can have questionable motivations for anything that we do or attempt to do. Yes. Uh, when it comes to forgiveness, I'm not sure we can actually achieve it if we have an insincere motivation. Of course we can't, we can't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we can believe we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, we which is actually very damaging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if we look at what is required in order for forgiveness to actually occur, mm -hmm. what should be motivating my desire to forgive? Well, obviously, everything regarding a motivation to forgive should be based on sincerity, right? We need to be sincere. Mm -hmm. And so, so my desire to forgive is going to be based on what is the loving thing to do and am I sincere about being loving? Gotcha. It's quite simple. It's quite simple, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Do I really want to become a loving individual? Mm -hmm. Am I really sincere about saying that I do? Yeah. Or is it just all the blah, blah, lip words, you know, words that come out of my mouth because everyone around me thinks it's great and listening to it, but, but it's not something that translates into love in action. Mm -hmm. If I'm sincere, my love will be acted upon. It will be demonstrated through my actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to look at. Mm -hmm. mm. Insincere or unloving emotions preventing forgiveness. So, obviously we can have a lot of these. <laughs> yep. What are some of the motivations to forgive, or so-called motivations to forgive, that are, un that are insincere or unloving and are therefore not going to allow true forgiveness to take place? Now, we've mentioned quite a few in our notes. Yeah, so maybe uh, what, we just need to itemise them, like. them maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one at a time and just explain a little bit of detail mm. about each one of them maybe. Yeah, mm. so I'll, I'll go ahead yeah. and do that. Yep. So, firstly, the desire to forget what others have done without feeling emotion. Yes. So, examples of this might be, it feels really painful to remember and deal with past abuse, say childhood abuse even. Mm -hmm. So I just want to forget about it, move on and have a happy life. Get on with my life. Yeah. Yep. Don't yep. feel don't yep. feel about it. Yes. Yeah. So then then I might say, look, I'm gonna forgive those people in the past who abused me, but I'm not gonna feel anything about it. I'm just gonna get on with things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we're convincing ourselves that we've forgiven mm -hmm. when the forgiveness process is an emotional process that we have not engaged. Yeah. But yeah. we want to believe we've engaged it mm -hmm. so that we don't have to have the emotional process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very sad thing to do well, to ourselves. It's almost like we're saying, isn't it, I don't want to feel about those things, so I'm just going to forgive so I don't have to. Exactly. And that's a very common um, kind of false belief about forgiveness on it, the planet, it, isn't it? It is, yeah, very common. Yeah. And, and trust me, it, it does not work. And anybody who does it on earth is going to find in the spirit world that they haven't forgiven a damn thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so it is a, but it is an insincere place too, you can see. Because basically what we're saying is it was possible to forgive without it being from the heart. That's really what you're saying to yourself. Mm. And it's, mm. that's insincere. It's insincere to believe that anything is possible without it being from the heart. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you know, you can see why it is judged as sincere by God. Mm. As insincere. Yeah. As insincere yeah. by God. And God's laws all measure the, the sincerity. So, therefore, this kind of action is judged as an insincere action. Yeah. And therefore, the law is going to penalise you for mm. having an insincere motivation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, another, um, another motivation that's going to prevent me forgiving mm -hmm. is when I just want to forget about what other people have done and I deny my emotions in order to forget it. Yeah. 
So an example of this might be like, I just say to myself and I say to other people that that bad treatment from that other person, it doesn't bother me at all. And or it didn't um, even happen. And I just shove <laughs> down, yeah, I just shove down my emotions about that yeah. so that I can just forget it's ever happened. So just push them down, push down, down. Yeah. You see a lot of people doing this. Yeah, that's why Alzheimer's is on the rise. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, age onset. Uh, Early, early onset, you mean? Or early, yeah, really early good? onset Alzheimer's is, is, is more and more prevalent. Yeah. And the reason why is because most people are engaging this behaviour where they desire to forget their life rather yeah. than to actually forgive their life. Yeah. And, and when I say forget their life, forget where harm is done to them. Or where they've or harmed where they've done. Harmed yeah. But that's a repentance process. We're here, we're talking about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they want to forget that other people have harmed them. And so they just ignore the fact that other people have harmed them. They try to not remember that other people have harmed them. And as mm. a result of that, the way the soul works is it starts closing down even your own brain. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now you're going to end up with problems where you can't even remember other things <laughs> as a result of that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a terribly self-destructive thing to do. Yeah. But it's all done out of fear of emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Another insincere or unloving emotion that is going to prevent me from giving mm -hmm. <laughs> is the desire to not have any more trouble. Yes. And I see this one, so an example. Very prevalent. Problem. Yes. So my family's telling me that I'm a hassle and I'm always creating problems when I'm un addressing an unloving treatment by one of the family members mm -hmm. or all the family members mm -hmm. towards me. And so I just don't want any more of this headache and trouble and, you know, everyone telling me I'm a troublemaker. So I'm just going to get over it yeah. and shut up. Yeah. yeah. And just shut up and not yeah. say anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In order to somehow, you know, think I'm repairing the relationship, of yeah. course. But, but the reality is, it's just to, because I'm afraid of trouble. Yes. Like I have no courage, really. <laughs> That's the main problem, really. Yeah. Yeah. I've got no courage. I don't stand up for what is right. I haven't got any ethics or morality. Yeah. I'm not standing up for what is right. Yeah. And, and also, the problem is that's probably going to create more trouble yeah. because I'm not actually addressing the cause, so the cause will continue, so that means I'm going to have more trouble. God's laws so dictate it, it's don't going, they? Yeah, God's, yeah. Law, God's laws dictate it. So the, the irony is that I'm going to be creating even more trouble by trying to avoid trouble. Yeah. And and you see that frequently happen, Definitely. you know, with people. Yeah. So so this is another impure or insincere motivation. So I'm only saying or saying I'm going to go through the process of forgiveness um, in order, and I'm going to say to them, I've forgiven you without actually yeah. going through the whole yeah. process in order to avoid any trouble with them. Yes. In, yeah. You know, avoid any trouble coming yeah. back on me. So it's almost like a denial of the pain inside of me just because I don't want trouble with other people. And very often we can tell ourselves, oh, I'm going to have more pain if I keep addressing this, there's going to be more trouble, when actually it's not true. There might be more conflict in the short term, but in honestly In the short term there'll definitely be conflict because yeah. it was when I do forgive, Yeah. I'm going to the other person is going to feel like they've done something wrong yeah. and that's going to make them flare up and be angry and upset. The more they fight that the feeling. The more they fight that feeling. Yeah. It also could have the opposite effect. It could have them see that they've actually done something wrong and they go into a state of repentance. could have that effect too, but that's up to them. Yeah. This, the, by doing this, I'm basically saying that I can control other people yeah. and their responses to truth. Yeah. And you can't. Right? And you shouldn't either. In fact, it's not even right to attempt mm -mm. to do that. And you will be penalised for another <laughs> sin <Yeah. laughs> by attempting to do it. Yeah. So again, another insincere and unloving uh, emotion. Mm -hmm. And again, it's going to in increase the penalties of our sin, something that we're going to have to be repentant for now because mm -hmm. we're now working in disharmony with God's laws addition, in addition to the original problem. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, another one. Mm. The desire to maintain or sustain a relationship overlooking the sin that the other person in the relationship is engaging in. Mm. Holy dooly, this is common. <laughs> so, for example, for example, I'm in a relationship with you mm -hmm. and I want security from you, my man. Give me security uh, or help me avoid fear of change in our relationship or maybe even the end of our relationship. Or maybe just so, even help you avoid the fact that I might get angry. Yes. And it feels bad. 
So then I just overlook all the harm that you're doing to me yep. because I want these other things from you, which yep. is essentially codependence. It is codependence. Um, yeah. Your fear is being pandered to yep. by yourself. Yep. And you're pandering to my other addictions, whatever that be. Yep. Mm. And this is a big way we avoid the forgiveness process yes. because of what we yes. want. Um, and we want to hold on to a relationship and we know that if we confront the harm that's being done to us, there's going to be a change in the relationship. Which needs to happen. It does. God's <laughs> saying, yes, please, make that happen. Yeah, it needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. But we're going, no, no, it doesn't need to happen. No, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want any change. I don't know what's going to be out yeah. of control. Yeah. 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 Again, there's penalties yeah. associated with that behaviour. Yeah. Well, it's an insincere state, isn't it? Insincere state, penalties yeah. associated with the behaviour. If yeah. I'm con controlling my true feelings mm -hmm. and emotions, Mm -hmm. in order to prevent a reaction on the part of another person, mm -hmm. then I'm not being honest. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it because I have a lack of courage. Yeah. And I'm doing it yeah. because I have no ethics regarding truth. Yeah. And yeah. these are problems I need to fix. Yeah. So in this case, really, we can say, look, I want to forgive my partner for what he's done, but really I don't want to confront it so I'm going to overlook it and I'll say I'm yeah, I'm going to be in private so yeah. we're living together but I'm going to privately go through forgiveness yeah. and I'm not even going to talk to him about it yeah and and it'll be all right yeah that's one you know sort of insincere way of going about it yeah. well it's also impossible because yeah. he'll feel it sooner or later yeah and he'll wonder what's going on yeah but but secondly when I that will also cause me to attempt to avoid any confrontation emotionally, which means that when I actually start to process my forgiveness of him mm -hmm. or her, they will react anyway. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I'm just telling myself I'm forgiving them when I haven't. Yes. Yeah. If they're not reacting. It's nothing's happened. Then nothing's happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, this other one is one I also see a lot. The desire to appear spiritual to myself or to other people. Yes, it's so, a terrible problem <laughs> in amongst all people of all religious faiths. Yes. So this can happen when I actually judge my own response to hurtful behaviour. So when I judge f feeling angry or I judge feeling hurt or afraid in response to someone doing something harmful, um, and I believe I always have to have calm and loving emotions <laughs> in order to be spiritual. Yes. So I shut down my real feelings and say, I forgive you. Yes. And it's all... And it's all just a bunch of crap. crap. <laughs> <laughs> Inside we're fuming. And, and we're trying and to... we're trying to put it all down it and, and control it. Because we've got to be spiritual. Our body's paying the penalty yep. of yep. it and yep. everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just impossible to do it. And yeah. And, and sooner or later, we'll find out it's impossible. Yeah. But, but see, most of us do it for, for particularly in re who are attached to religious faith, yeah. we do it for strong religious reasons. Yeah. So we feel it's the right thing to do. We feel that that's what God wants us to do yeah. and so forth and so forth. And so we have a very strong tendency yeah. to engage this kind of facade-based process, yeah. which actually incurs more sin on our part. It does, yeah. Right? Uh, thinking that it, it proves our spirituality or it proves our good condition. Our development or... Yeah. And, and we... God and knows your condition whether yes. you think it's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> and really we're perpetuating towards ourself, but that uh, judgment towards ourself about emotional response... Not always. It might not be because of judgment. That might be one emotional reason. Yeah. But it might be many emotional reasons. Just just that I want you to approve of me. Just yep. that I want you to think I'm great. Yeah. When yep. I'm not. And when yep. I know I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> but surely, surely um, in order for us to be hiding our hurt feelings, in mm -hmm. this case, because it's someone hurting us, hiding our response... We must feel there's something inherently wrong or weak or undeveloped about that state. Otherwise, we wouldn't hide it. 
Not necessarily. I feel we have a lot of more selfish motivations too. Mm -hmm. You know, not to feel weak or not to feel, you yeah. know, they're, 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 we've got to be careful, you know, because we're so sneaky with this stuff. Yeah. We, we, we want to tell ourselves that it's all to do with other people judging us or other people harming us or other people doing things to us or, 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 or our own we're judgment judging us or we're yeah, yeah. when the reality might be quite different. It might be that actually we have other feelings yeah. that we're trying to prevent yeah. selfish feelings that we're trying to prevent by saying this so trying to prevent the idea or concept that there's something wrong with me for example mm. or trying to prevent the idea or concept that i'm disapproved of by god mm. or trying to prevent the idea or concept that other people will disapprove me mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. and they are all selfish motivations they're not they're not just inbuilt belief systems like mm -hmm. judgment is mm -hmm. they are selfish motivations gotcha. to manipulate other people yeah. so you know we've got to be real careful with ourselves there's many yeah. reasons why we choose yeah. to do these kind of yeah, things sure. and not all of them are based around belief systems that are inbuilt inside of us yep. but rather are based around what we're trying to earn or get from other people our addiction to the facade to get responses from other people that we think we deserve mm, mm, mm. okay mm. all right so that's a list and uh, again not an exhaustive list <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> but it's just a few different ways where mm. we can say we want to forgive but we're actually quite insincere yeah in that in that intention yeah yeah Sincere or loving emotions permitting forgiveness. So now we're looking at the opposite now, mm -hmm. aren't we? We're not looking at what will prevent us from uh, forgiving other people. Yep. Now we're looking at what's going to help us. Yes. What emotions will help us yep. and forgive what, other people. And what are the motivations that I would have inside of me mm -hmm. that would cause me to begin to engage a sincere process of forgiveness? Yeah. What, what, yeah. what are the feelings I will have that will make me want to do it? Yes. Yeah. 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 And make it happen. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I'll list these and uh, let Good you respond. Right. Yeah. So the <clears> desire <throat> to feel every emotion. Yes, like, you know, this is a great motivator for forgiveness because at the end of the day, forgiveness has stored up emotions inside of us that it's hurt that need to be released. So if I desired to feel every emotion, I'd release them. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. Mm -hmm. yep. okay, no. And I would become sensitive to how I've been hurt because I'm wanting to feel. So I'd start to feel, oh gosh, I was hurt there. And then I'd think, oh, I want to let go of that feeling and it would all go. And then... Without even really thinking, I want to forgive, I'd be engaged in the process of forgiveness. I would be, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm. Next one. The desire to repair every relationship with people. Yes. So while you're holding internally anger, animosity, resentment, hatred or whatever towards mm -hmm. a person for their action, then, then even if their action was towards you harmful, mm -hmm. If you're holding the animosity, then there's there's a fissure in the relationship. Yep. If you truly desired to repair the relationship, then you'd want to go through with them this process of forgiving them. You would. It's interesting, isn't it, that um, often through the process of forgiving another person, they become, sometimes they become challenged and then they engage their own process of change, but sometimes they resist change. And, and it even makes the relationship worse. That, you know, but even though they might not be in our life anymore, yep. from God's perspective, the relationship is actually in better shape. Correct. It's more repaired. So our, the worst is only our own opinion. Or the world's opinion. Or the world's opinion. Because actually when we're forgiven, we don't even feel like it's worse, do we? No, no. Like uh, what I found with my family in particular, you know, they would think I'm holding all these grudges mm -hmm. that, based on what they've responded to me about. The reality is I don't feel any grudges hardly at all yeah. at this stage. And I know I've got a bit more forgiveness to work through there. But, but if they come and talk to me tomorrow and actually demonstrate a different condition, I'd gladly, gladly engage the relationship. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's, uh, and I more easily engage it than what they could at the moment, yeah. in fact. Yeah. So, so that's an indication that the forgiveness process has at least begun. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, the, it, it's often often the opposite, but but it does depend on the reaction of the person who needs to repent. Yeah. So, the person who needs to repent, which is the person who's harmed you, yeah. at some point to completely repair the relationship with you, they are going to have to repent, mm -hmm. and 
And until that point in time, the relationship can't be completely repaired anyway. Mm. And I made a note here as well, because I feel that my desire to repair my relationships with people with all people actually drives my desire to forgive certain people. So yes. by this, I mean, I would like to have a repaired and healthy relationship with spirits, with people that all people in general and with people that I've harmed as a result of my lack of forgiveness in the past. So not just to because I feel I've damaged relationships through my lack of forgiveness of other people. Yeah, you sort of impose what you haven't forgiven on people who have no tendency to do those things. Who, who so I in other words, if you're with. treated badly as a child and, and you now feel tentative in a relationship, mm. a person comes along with an open heart wanting to have a relationship with you, just a friendship or whatever, you're going to go all resistive and everything. And yep. that, and in a way that's saying to them, don't touch me, don't mm. don't hurt me, don't, you know, I think you're going to hurt me, aren't you? Mm. And how, how it's a presumption, yep. really, that they're going to do those things. and obviously that injures the relationship. And so that feels sincere to me when I have a desire to say, repair my relationship with you, mm -hmm. uh, even though I have nothing to forgive you for, mm -hmm. um, I can see that by forgiving other people from my past, I'm gonna actually repair this relationship with you. And so that motivates well, my it's desire. It's probably even more truthful to say you're gonna build the relationship y with yes. anybody. With any Potential for a relationship with anybody, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm a loving relationship to healthy relationship. So that yeah. then motivates my desire to engage forgiveness with people in my past. Correct. Because yeah. you don't want to drag the events of the past, the hurt of the past into the relationship. Oh my goodness, because you do. Mm. Unless you've forgiven, you do. You do. There's just no way yeah. you're around it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. The desire to repair my relationship with God can also um motivate it, mm. me in a sincere way to forgive mm. now i'd like to ask you a little more about this well whenever we hold a grudge towards our brother or sister we're really treating god's other child in a way that god doesn't treat them mm -hmm. so we're now in disharmony with god we, we our opinions about the individual are different to God's opinions about the individual. Our feelings about the individual are different to God's feelings about the individual. If our feelings and God's feelings are in disharmony with one another, we are now out of harmony with our relationship with God. Yeah. So now, now we have a relationship with God issue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so even if we truly desired a relationship with God, we would go through the process of forgiveness because of wanting to repair the relationship with God mm -hmm. so that we can feel good about God's children, whether they are sinners or not. Mm. Mm. And is it, just as you corrected me in the previous example, is it um, more accurate to say so that I can build a relationship with God or this issue of repairing a relationship with God, can I repair a relationship with God before I've consciously had engaged a relationship no, with God? Obviously no, obviously not. But yeah. but you can uh, hold on to resentments yeah. after you've established a relationship with yes. God that then damage the relationship with God. Yeah. So so yeah. that's why I use the word repair. Yes. Mm. Mm. So it's either to repair or build. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, the desire to be truthful in every relationship? Yeah, why wouldn't you be truthful that a person has hurt you, yeah. that you know that what they did was sinful mm -hmm. and that you've gone through the process of forgiveness with them? Why wouldn't you be truthful about that? Yeah. And if you know that they are not repentant, why wouldn't you say you're not repentant for that? Yeah. You, you, haven't, you haven't gone through the process of feeling sorry about that. So I know that it's possible you will do that again. Yeah. So a good example of that is, let's say a partner cheats on you and you forgive him, mm -hmm. and but you know that he hasn't worked through the reasons why he did it. Yeah. Then you could say, well, it's very, I can't have a relationship with you until you repent mm. for what you've done, mm. because otherwise I know that you're just going to do it again. Yeah. And sooner or later, I'm going to either be hurt by it in some way, whether it's physically, like through a venereal disease or some other kind of problem, mm -hmm. or emotionally with love, you know, yeah. I'll be hurt by it. So so I can't engage a relationship with you while you have not gone through the process of repentance. Mm. Why wouldn't mm. you say those things? Mm. It makes no sense not to. Yeah, 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 mm. absolutely. The desire to be ethical and moral even if it causes problems. Mm. This is a big issue for most people. 
most people lack the courage to be ethical and moral when there's a potential that so-called problems yeah. may arise and it will only be problems as defined by the other people yeah. um, where they put pressure on you emotionally or, or even become violent as a result of your ethics or morality. But uh, the reality is we need to have learn to have the courage and God's laws are trying to teach us to have the courage to be mm. ethical and moral under all situations in all circumstances. Mm. 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 Yep. And the desire to acknowledge the sin committed by others is going to lead us towards <coughs> forgiveness. Mm. Yeah. Because it, obviously if we don't acknowledge the sin committed by others, then we can't forgive. Mm -hmm. So we have to be honest about, yes, you did sin. Mm -hmm. Like from God's perspective, you sinned, mm -hmm. not from mine. Mm -hmm but from God's. Mm -hmm. It's not my personal opinion here. I know this is God's opinion. You have sinned because these are the reasons why. And that is certainly going to help them, but will also help you mm. to forgive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So um, is the desire to feel free of damaging pain and relationships from the past is that a sincere desire to forgive? Well, I think it's a part of a sincere desire to mm -hmm. forgive, certainly, mm -hmm. because you're basically what you're trying to do is, is you're trying to release yourself of the pain and the suffering that you've experienced from the past so that your current relationships are able to be maintained in a loving state. Mm. So that's a part of a sincere desire to forgive, certainly. <laughs> you could make it insincere, though. Yes, by, in by, by having expectations that by forgiving, it does repair the relationship. Yeah, right. So in other words, if I demand, now that I've forgiven you, mm -hmm. I want, you, you know, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to do that for me. Yeah. Now that would be an insincere motivation. Yeah. And therefore would not be measured by God's laws as a sincere motivation to forgive. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. no forgiveness is taking place. But say if we've got the example where we can feel we're dragging all this past hurt and affecting our current <coughs> relationships and mm -hmm. just a feeling of like, I just want to be free of that stuff so that I don't keep creating more. Yeah, that's a very loving motivation, isn't it? You, you, what you're basically saying is that instead of causing pain in your current relationship because of all this past hurt, you're going to go through some things so that you no longer can cause harm or, mm. or pain in the current relationship. Now, that's a definite desire to not harm others, but actually help them. They'll enjoy your company better. They'll enjoy their relationship with you better. They won't be having all of these projected emotions coming at them from you about all the things of your past that, they are, now, that are now imposed upon them. And you won't have all these false beliefs about them that are just imagination based on past events. And all of those things are going to definitely benefit the relationship. And that all of that is loving to the person you're with. So that's a loving motivation to address your past pain. Mm. So how much of um, forgiveness is really about the other person and how much is it about ourselves you know uh, you hear all these kind of um, kind of platitudes about forgiveness is a gift to the other person or forgiveness is a gift to yourself and it, you know um, should my desire to love the other person motivate my forgiveness or do you see what I'm kind of asking there mm. yeah forgive comes from the word give mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it is going to be a gift that you're giving to another person mm -hmm. by forgiving but it's not the gift that the world sort of sees it's the gift of showing the other person that you know that a sin has been committed mm. and that you f have forgiven them you you have given them the gift of releasing all of the emotional damage that they did to you mm -hmm. And you've released it all, so you no longer feel any negative feeling towards them anymore. Mm. And that's a gift that you've given them, certainly. Mm. But interestingly, it's also a gift you're giving yourself. Mm. Because by giving yourself this gift, you are freeing yourself to love better, to love stronger, to enjoy love more, to be happier, to let go of the 
past hurt and engage a new life with new desires that are not influenced by that past hurt. So you're actually giving yourself even larger gifts than you've given the giver, mm. the, the person, the person you're giving to. Giving. And this is why I said in the first century, there is more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is going to be more happiness for you as the giver of the gift of forgiveness mm -hmm. than there is for the person who's on the receiving end of your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that is a natural consequence of the law that there is more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. Mm. So yes, there, there, a lot of these so-called platitudes mm -hmm. are based on real things. You know, they are based on real emotions. But it has to be sincere forgiveness. And so, but basically, it sounds like you're saying the sincere motivation for forgiveness can be really about the desire for my own personal freedom or the desire for the... It won't be just for that. Yes. It will also be, it will complete itself when you now are concerned for the welfare of the other person and where they're at. So the forgiveness will complete itself or the motivation to begin the process? The will... forgiveness will complete itself. I see. The but motivation, motivation... begins sometimes with just one-sided. Yes. But in the end, the motivation will become purer than that. Yes. It will be so pure that it's like God's motivation to forgive, mm -hmm. which is to benefit not only the giver mm -hmm. of the forgiveness, that but also, also the, the receiver yeah. of the forgiveness. Yeah, beautiful. In a sense. Yeah. So yes, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful gift you give to other people. Potentially, of course, they may not receive it, mm -hmm. and that's why also there's more happiness in giving. giving than receiving. See, the receiver may not see the benefit of the gift. Yeah. So they may not, for for this time or for some time to come, see that it was a gift. Mm -hmm. But you will still feel happy that you gave it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Mm.